got the Miss Liz's Super Awesome Library and Vlog. <laughs> okay, we better stop now because we could just spend 20 minutes doing that alone and we'll, we'll spare you that, we promise. So, so is everyone ready for me to share with Miss Liz and you guys what the punchline is for last week's joke of the week? Just I mean, I could, I could be mean and just never tell Miss Liz ever and make her cover her ears and tell you guys. So, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's not a very positive face right there, Miss Liz. I don't like that idea. It's a terrible idea. All right. I guess I can share it with you, too. <laughs> what kind of shorts do clouds wear? admit I think that's my favorite joke that we've had so far I mean I know you like the ghosts and monsters and anything Halloween -y ones but I do I like that yeah but I do like that one that one's cute and now this week we are going to be playing a game of Mad Libs for those of you that don't know what it is Mad Libs is a word game that you ask someone to give you a whole bunch of words uh, and then you put it into a funny story. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be asking Miss Beth for some words. If you want to play at home, feel free to write your own words down. Uh, and we can see what our story is at the end. So the first thing I need from you, Miss Beth, is a person. Like a proper noun person or like a... Like a person you would be with. So a name. Yes. Yeah. Martha Washington. Fun fact, wife of the first president, George Washington, just in case you did not know that. I now need an adjective. This is a lot of pressure testing out my elementary school grammar skills. I'm just, just saying that right now. <laughs> Funny. I need another adjective. Um, adjective, adjective, adjective. Sad. All right, now I need a noun. Mushroom. All right, I need another adjective. What's up with all the adjectives? I don't know, there's still one, two, three more coming up too. Oh man, colorful. All right, I need, I need another noun. Light bulb. I need another adjective. Actually, you can give me two adjectives. Oh man, um, messy and damp. All right, now I need a verb which for everyone watching at home is an action word. Mm -hmm. Running. Or would just be, you want to just run? Just run. Okay. Uh, give me another verb. Fetch. Okay, I need a person. Jason Reynolds. Ooh, love. Uh, need another verb. Right. All right, one more adjective. Soft. All right, and the last thing I need is one more verb. Hopping, hop. All right, Miss Beth, are you ready to hear? What I am so are? ready. I was born ready. All right, so this Mad Lib is called Trip to the Park. Yesterday, Martha Washington and I went to the park. On our way to the funny park, we saw a sad mushroom on a bike. Oh, I like this book. Is this a book? It should be a book. It should be. We also saw a big, colorful balloon tied to a light bulb. Once we got to the messy park, the sky turned damp, started to run, and Fetch, Jason Reynolds, and I wrote all the way home. Tomorrow, we will try to go to the soft park again and hope it doesn't hop. <laughs> well, Jason Reynolds and I writing does makes sense it does, yes it does make sense for those of you who are not familiar jason reynolds is a very good author you should read all of his books all of them mm -hmm. yay i like i like our man loves two thumbs up yes i like the sad mushroom i think that was my favorite part put together on a bike i'm telling you it would be a good picture book I don't, yeah i don't know about you guys i'm i'm imagining like toad from mario like just riding uh -huh. his bike but. See, I'm picturing our sad mushroom more as that he's different than the other mushrooms and doesn't fit in and feels bad about it, but realizes being special and unique is also a good thing, and then the other mushrooms accept him. Oh, mm -hmm. I like that too. Nothing's worse than unaccepting mushrooms. Nope. You know why? Because they are not a fun guy. 
Hey, you're not supposed to make the jokes. <laughs> Bonus joke for you guys. You're welcome. Stop, stop showing me up. You're welcome. Speaking of books and really good authors and really good things you should read, we are going to be moving on to our... You are up first this week, Miss Liz. Yay! My first book for you guys is a series called Nikki and Deja by Karen English. It is great for you guys that are just learning how to read, looking for some beginning chapter books. And in this book, you are going to meet Nikki and Deja, who live next door to each other and are best friends. They do everything together. Watch Saturday morning cartoons, play jacks, jump double dutch at recess, and help each other with their homework for Mrs. Shelby's third grade class. But when an arrogant new girl arrives and Nikki and Deja form a club that would exclude her, the results are not what they'd expect. For my first book, I have Goldie Vance, The Hotel Who Done It by Lillian Rivera. I don't know about you guys, but when I was younger, I loved reading books about kids solving mysteries. I was a huge Nancy Drew fan, so I was very excited to see this book. Marigold Goldie Vance lives and works at the Cross Palms Resort Hotel in Florida with a whole slew of characters. Her dad, Art, the manager of the joint, Cheryl LeBeau, the concierge and Goldie's best friend, and Walter Tui, the hired hotel detective. Her mom, Sylvie, works nearby at the Mermaid Club. While life at the Cross Palms is always busy, the resort is currently overrun with Hollywood types filming the hottest new creature feature, and tensions are at an all-time high. Even Goldie's mom is in on the movie act, doing what she does best, playing a mermaid. Just when Goldie thinks the movie biz couldn't get any more exciting, a diamond-encrusted swimming cap goes missing, and all fingers point to Goldie's mom as the culprit. Can Goldie uncover the truth before it's too late? This thrilling novel explores a never-before-seen caper and features 16 full-color comic pages essential to unraveling the mystery. I mean, it has a mermaid. It has a gold-encrusted bathing cap. Which I don't think any of you guys even know what a bathing cap is. A long, long time ago, women used to wear these really weird, tight, plastic, ba plastic bag type things on their head to keep their hair dry. Yeah, you had me our mermaid in and the words creature feature, because I just think of like the old B-list scary movies, which I love. Well, this takes place, I think, in the 60s, so it has that. Miss Liz is going to read that one. I got her. Hook, line, and sinker. Nice. And while I'm reading that one, you guys should check out The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. There are no shortcuts to surviving your first day in a new school. You can't fix it with duct tape like you would your Chuck Taylors. On day one, 12-year-old Malu, Maria Louise if you want to annoy her, inadvertently upsets Posada Middle School's Queen Bee, violates the school's dress code with her punk rock look, and disappoints her college professor mom in the process. Her dad, who now lives a thousand miles away, says things will get better as long as she remembers the first rule of punk, be yourself. The real Malu loves rock music, skateboarding zines, and soroizo. Hold the cilantro, please. And when she assembles a group of like-minded misfits at school and starts a band, she finally begins to feel at home. She'll do anything to preserve this, which includes standing up to an anti-punk school administration to fight for her right to express herself. Black and white illustrations and collage art throughout make the first rule of punk a perfect pick for fans of books like Roller Girl, Raina Telgemeier, and online magazines. My next book is Sam Wu is Not Afraid of Ghosts by Katie and Kevin Tang. Um, I like Sam Wu because he is an everyman character. For He keeps getting embarrassed due to things that are beyond his control, and it's just how he rolls with it. I don't know about you, but I can definitely think of a few experiences in my life where embarrassing stuff might have happened and I just wanted to stick my head in a hole in the ground. Yep. After an unfortunate and very embarrassing incident in the Space Museum, Sam goes on a mission to prove to the school bully and all his friends that he is not afraid of anything. Just like the heroes on his favorite show, Space Blasters. And when it looks like his house is haunted, Sam gets the chance to prove how brave he can be. A funny, touching, and charming story of goat hunting, escaped pet snakes, and cats with attitude. I Have Better Nate Than Ever by Tim Fetterly. Nate Foster has big dreams. His whole life, he's wanted to star in a Broadway show. Heck, he'd settle for seeing a Broadway show. But how is Nate supposed to make his dreams come true when he's stuck in Jankburg, Pennsylvania, where no one, except his best pal Libby, appreciates a good show tune? With Libby's help, Nate plans a daring overnight escape to New York. 
There's an open casting call for E.T. the musical, and Nate knows this could be the difference between small town blues and big town stardom. Another one of my favorites from the notebooks of a middle school princess by Meg Cabot. I'm sure everyone has heard of the Princess Diaries, so this is Mia Thermopolis's younger sister. Feeling out of place in her aunt's high fashion family, spunky bookworm Olivia is astonished when a limo containing Princess Mia Thermopolis of Genovia pulls up to invite her to New York to finally meet her father, who promptly invites her to come live with him, Mia, Grandmare, and her two fabulous poodles. Maybe Olivia Grace Clarice Mignonette Harrison isn't so average after all. I mean, it has two pit poodles, you get to be a princess. And I love the Princess Diaries. Who, would, who wouldn't want to live that life? Uh, not me. I mean, I would, so. so. Wait, who would, who, so yes, you, you want to do that. That's, that's do a good that. thing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. the bottom line. Jesus. Right. Princess Poodles, sign me up. Right, fast forward to the end. I want that life. Please and thank mm -hmm. you. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, my last book for you guys this week is Ice Wolves by Arnie Kaufman. It is the first book in the Elemental series. Everyone in Valen knows that Ice Wolves and Scorched Dragons are sworn enemies who live deeply separate lives. So when 12-year-old orphan Anders takes one elemental form and his twin sister Reyna takes another, he wonders whether they are even related. Still, whether or not they're family, Reyna is Anders' only true friend. She's nothing like the brutal, cruel dragons who claimed her as one of their own and stole her away. In order to rescue her, Anders must enlist at the foreboding Ulfer Academy, a school for young wolves that values loyalty to the pack above all else. But for Anders, loyalty is more complicated than obedience, and friendship is the most powerful shape-shifting force of all. And for my last book, I have Baby Monkey Private Eye. Uh, you can ask Miss Liz, I talk about this book all the time. All I'm of surprised. the time. I'm surprised it hasn't come up yet, but I'm now it has. Baby Monkey, Private Eye, will investigate stolen jewels, missing pizzas, and other mysteries, if he can manage to figure out how to put his pants on. So if you guys are familiar with Brian Selznick, he wrote The Invention of Hugo Pepre, which was very, very famous and popular. This is more for, for his younger fans. So something, if you're beginning how to read, it is a really good choice. Very funny, and the pictures have a whole separate story in and of themselves. I love it. And now that we've given you guys a list of books to check out this week, it is time for our five minute scavenger hunt. <laughs> If you have joined us before, you know how this rolls. If you have not, what you're going to do is you're going to have five minutes to find five items in your house. Uh, there will be a timer up on the screen with some fun music and a timer that will go off. This week, what you guys are going to try to find is a phone. It could be a house phone or a cell phone or a fake phone or a Barbie phone, whatever kind of phone you got. You are going to find a vegetable. You are going to find something that is triangle shaped. You are going to find something with your name on it. And in honor of Miss Beth and I's background tonight, I want you guys to find something green. Perfect. With all of that being said, five minutes is going on the clock. Ready, set, go.
All right, time's up. How did you do? Tune in next week to see what other crazy and kooky items I want you guys to find in your house. And now it is time for my favorite part of the week. Time to go to sleep. No, not time to go to sleep. Time to have a snack. Ooh, I do like time to have a snack. Time to read a book. Time to read a book. Okay, fine. I have lots of favorite times of the week. But. (laughs) (laughs) Why did the monster eat a light bulb? Tune in next week and you will find out. But that is all for us for now. We will see you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. For everyone who doesn't understand that reference, that's a really old Batman TV show. Check it out. It's very, very, very funny. But that's a whole, that's a whole other vlog of classic <laughs> TV shows that we think you should watch. We'll get back to you on that one. And that is all for us. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.